Okay, all rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Notation of the exits in front and the rear in the electronic device. Please put it on vibrate. Uh, call the roll. Councilman Alvarez. Present. Councilwoman Eckhart. Here. Councilman Larker. Here. Councilman Lord. Here. Supervisor Hay. Here. First item on the agenda this evening will be a discussion about geese. Um, this is not a public hearing. Everyone will be given an opportunity to speak. Try not to be repetitious. I'm going to lead it off by giving you some facts about what's been going on with geese here in the town of Southeast for the past decade. Uh, make a presentation accordingly. Town board will make comment and then we'll take all your comments and listen carefully. So, for the past decade, the town has applied for and has received a record of authorization permit annually with the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. The town was recently visited by New York State DEC enforcement officer in response to a complaint lodged against the town pertaining to this incident, and the town was found to be in full compliance with the law. The permit issued to the town gives the town the authority to take geese from April 1, 2013 to August 31st with the current year, specifically stating that it's being issued under condition three, specifically the standard conditions defined below. Public health control order for Canadian geese. Any manager or any employee or agent of the manager of a drinking water supply or swimming area that is subject to regular testing for bacteria by a federal, state, or local health agency may take any number of Canadian geese between April 1 and August 31st and any number of nest or eggs Canadian geese between March 1st and June 30th from the property they own, manage, or control and where geese pose a specific immediate human health risk by creating conditions conducive to transmission of human or zoonotonic pathogens. Managers of drinking water supplies or swimming areas wishing to take geese under the authority of the control order must obtain the authorization in advance from their local DEC wildlife office, and they must submit an annual report summarizing activities, including the dates, numbers, and locations of birds, nest and taken, eggs taken. A report must be completed even if no birds, nests, or eggs were taken. Reports must be submitted by September 15th of each year to New York State DEC Game Management in Albany, New York. Failure to submit a report may result in a denial of authorization the following year. And that's according to New York State DEC record, authorization of standard conditions. The first year that I was in office, in the spring, the very first year, again, one major issue that I was confronted with was the numerous complaints from our residents about the sanitary conditions, geese droppings, in our parks and ball fields. Electric Zone Field, Markel Park, Town Beach and Park, Scalpino Park, and Volunteer Park. The first thing we tried was using cut out the dogs, which suggested remedy. However, that didn't work, and people actually stole the cuts. That's the first thing we tried. It was a cut out of, uh, it looks like a wolf, a dog. It kind of moved. Um, Canadian geese are much smarter probably than even I am because they know what to do and what not to do. Over the past few years, the town has employed a geese chaser from April to November. The person goes out before dusk each evening and uses a screamer gun to scare them away. And the first thing every morning, personnel from the special districts department repeat the same activity if need be, and go out during the workday as well. This goes on from April 1st until November 1st. And that does not count the activity of our recreation department, which goes out there to take care of the beach during the summer. <coughs> Recent geese, resident geese, are long lived, especially in urban suburban areas such as ours. They live more than 20 years. Most resident geese begin breeding when they are two to three years old, and they nest every year for the rest of their lives. The trouble with Canadian geese is that they usually return to the same location annually if they ever leave. Attempting to trap and relocate them has proven to be a fruitless effort as they just return time and time again. Goose lay an average of five to six eggs per nest, however can be as many as 10 to 12, about half of which will hatch and become free-flying birds within two to three months by the fall. 
A female goose may produce more than 50 young during its lifetime. Geese begin to nest at the age of two, mating a nest in the season from February through late April. Problems develop as local flocks grow. Overglazed lawns, accumulations of droppings and feathers on play areas and walkways, nutrient loading in water bodies, ponds and lakes, public health concern at beaches and drinking water <coughs> supplies. The main way geese shed their bacteria is through feces, which we'll report shortly is literally in tons during their life. The likelihood of these diseases present much higher during the warmer months. In other words, as the weather's warmer, they are out more and they defecate much more. Bacteria, some of the harmful diseases that Canadian geese can carry are parasites and viruses that come into forms. I'm not even gonna to begin to mention them because you have to be a doctor I'd probably to pronounce them, but the ones you and I would recognize, E. coli, Listeria, and Salmonella. Because E. coli is so is closely correlated to temperature, the likelihood of the presence is much higher during the warmer months rather than in the cold. This bacteria usually manifests itself in humans through pneumonia or a wound. Avoid feces. Now, that shows a geese poop. Just one dropping, the size of a quarter. It's much larger than a quarter. I think I would use the silver dollar, but they used a quarter. If you come to in contact with geese feces, make sure to wear protective gloves and wash your hands thoroughly as you are done. If children have been playing in a grass area that is frequented by geese, it is very important to wash their hands, shoes, and toys as they were playing with because small ch children frequently place their fingers in their mouths and good hygiene is imperative. An average geese, goose or whatever you want to call them, can eat up to one to five pounds of grass per day. <clears throat> large numbers of geese have large quantities of feces. A single goose can defecate every 20 minutes up to one and a half pounds of feces per day. Now, between April 1 and November 30th, of each year, that's 243 days, each goose would produce 1.5 pounds of feces a day, 364 pounds a year, 7,290 pounds in a lifetime. And to round it out, that's 3.6 tons of toxic waste that needs to be removed from the environment during our lifetime. One, this past year, there were 19. They produced, or did produce, 28.5 pounds of feces. In a year, they would have produced 6,925 pounds. During their lifetime, 138,510 pounds in a lifetime of 20 years. And that equivalent is 69.25 tons of toxic waste that needs to be removed from the environment. Now, believe it or not, Based on all DEC records, hunting is the most cost-effective method for managing populations of suburban Canadian geese. We kill mice and rats. We hunt deer, duck, rabbit, turkey, and geese during regulated seasons. These geese harvested in the same case were donated. The geese that were harvested in, well, this year and in past years as well to a wolf conservation center in South Salem, contrary to the misinformation as meat laden with lead poison is untrue. The law requires the use of non-toxic buckshot birdshot, which is steel BBs, not lead. For the record, as town supervisor and town member, I will listen. I will consider be implementing reasonable <coughs> suggestions made this evening. However, as town supervisor and a member of this town board, I have the responsibility to protect the health, safety, and welfare of all of our residents. And I will take every measure available to me by law to combat this ever-grown problem and all options, including the culinary geese, to deal with the issue that is on the table. Now, this here is a picture of <coughs> Volunteer Park in the town of Southeast. That's off of Zimmer Road. I don't know if any of you ever frequented it, but it's the large ballpark for the town. They call it the Major League Field. I know you really can't see it that well, but if you look in that brown, it should be nice brown, but there are a lot of quarters laying up there. All those droppings are what the geese have produced and put up on that field. I cannot tell you, I went up there to ball games, football games, football practice, the kids, the parents that are involved in these sports programs are livid that the town does absolutely nothing to prevent this. <coughs> we do that and not much more. Now this is a better close up. That's geese droppings. 
Now, there's only so much this town can do, and we do everything we can. The only place we can hunt them in all the town is on Lake Tanetta, and the reason for that... Ma'am, stand up, please. There, in, what's your name, please? Okay, sit down, thank you. Everyone, please be respectful of what we're doing here this evening. This is informational meeting, and there's no need for that. Please. Now, that there is a ball field. Now, some people here must not have children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews that ever come to play, go to the beach. It's a problem. Now, this here was taken, let's see, yesterday was Wednesday. Wednesday at our beach. This is every day, every day at Lake Tanetta, every day. I know some of you here this evening live on Lake Tanetta. I don't know if they're not coming to your property and doing it, but I'm telling you there are many, many properties in Lake Tanetta that this is happening, and especially at our beach. Now, you can see the ripple of the water. That's the ripple of the water. On the right-hand side is the beach, and this is what happens every day. And I'm telling you now, as much as we scrape this stuff off to the best of our ability, what we do up at Volunteer Park and every park that we have in town of Southie, go to any of our parks, this is a problem. Okay, big time. And we're doing everything humanly possible to do this. This here is more, more. And this again, ladies and gentlemen, is just two days ago. Now, the two people that have to clean this are now sitting here in this front row. They work for the recreation department. And every day, they have to go out there and do this. Now, at some point in time, I'm quite sure they're going to want to get up and speak, not because they work for the town, but they know what we are experiencing. Many of you don't see this. And if you did and can justify this, I think it's absolutely horrible. And I'm going to tell you now, by doing what we're here doing here tonight, I'm not sure many people are going to want to go swimming there anymore. There, another one. They will tell you how much they pick up every day. And we have this in every one of our parks. Now, it's wet here when they go into the lake. You know, we spent years upon years upon years, long before I got here, the rehabilitation <coughs> of Lake Tanetta and try to bring it back to what it once was has been something that the town has tried to do. We, this town board and previous ones, have every year stepped up what happens there and try to make it even better. But I'm telling you now, I've lived here for 62 years, and I'm telling you now, it gets worse and worse and worse. Because I'm telling you, 20 years ago, the Canadian geese would fly over. We used to joke them. They're going down to Florida for the winter. They don't go there anymore. They're staying right here. Or some go and many stay. It's a huge problem. So I want to point out, this here is Tanetta Lake. It's our <coughs> lake. It's all our lakes. I live over in the Lake Tanetta area. I have lake rights in my property. I work too much. I never go down there, and I don't really swim much. But it's... Uh, it's a jewel of our community, and I'm telling you now, you may not believe it, but the geese are ruining many of the water bodies. Now, what's happening here tonight happened in Carmel a couple months ago. It happens almost in every town in this county. And I'm telling you now, on, in the Northeast United States, the problem is getting worse and worse and worse. So we're here to deal with it this evening. We'll talk, we'll discuss, we'll take your observations, what we can do and possibly do better. There's no suggestion that we won't do unless it's cost prohibitive. I think we tried quite a few things. The geese chaser is working, but you know what? When you chase them, they come back. The biggest problem we have with Tanetta Lake is we only can chase them that far because once those babies get in the water, guess what? They're not moving anywhere because they know you're not going to do anything about it. So we've hunted out about once a year, and it's something that's done. So with that, I'll go to the town board, and we'll open up to the public comment. Anyone town board? I'd like to gonna, hear what I'd like to hear what everyone has to say. They don't need to listen to me first. Okay, when you come up to the mic, uh, just identify yourself. You, you tell us about these residents, approximately where you live, and make your comment. And again, if someone has already stated something, please not try not to be repetitious in any way. One at a time. You can just kind of sit in the first one and get up because you might stand for a bit. Good. Good evening. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, my name is Maria Lagana. I'm a resident of the Tanetta Lake community, the president of the Tanetta Lake Park Association, and a local practicing doctor of veterinary medicine. Um, I'm representing myself tonight, uh, residents who live on or near Tanetta Lake, the members of TLPA, and residents of the town of Brewster and others who care about the well-being of wildlife. Um, 
The first thing that I want to mention is in regards to shooting the geese, there's been studies to show that the geese, uh, shooting of the geese is not an effective way of keeping geese off the lake. You just said that yourself, they keep coming back every year. It simply opens up spots for more geese and perhaps bigger populations to re-inhabit the lake. Um, Season-long deterrence, having a lake without a lot of grassy shoreline and not allowing young to be born like addling of the eggs is a more effective approach. Um, in addition, the manner in which they were killed this, this year was brutal and inhumane. Um, a resident of the lake witnessed the event and has photos of this. She saw some of the geese wounded and dragged away. Um, <clears throat> there was no regard for pain or suffering for these peaceful living animals, and this was not done by professionals and was not done properly. Um, the loud gunshots was a traumatic event for the people who lived in the area. They had no notice that this was gonna happen. So that's, the topic is shooting of the geese we don't believe is effective and the way it was done was improper. Uh, in addition, the decision making process was made without any public awareness and was budget was spent without any mention on board agendas. Um, it was not on an agenda or minutes that we could find and appeared to be decided on without any other options considered or resident involvement. You did say that some other options were considered but obviously shooting the geese have not been effective because they keep coming back. I did some research into this, and the first thing is I contacted a professional company. There's a lot of them out there. Um, one of them is called Geese Relief. When I told him there was 14 geese killed and there was 14 geese on a, a lake of this size, he, he said, you don't have a geese problem. And so, you know, in his opinion, 14 geese on such a big lake is really not a problem, but apparently you think that there's a lot of uh, geese defecation. I can't argue with that. Um, so I'm proposing that we either get a professional company who knows how to do this better than just us and, um, you know, I, I'm sort of, you know, implement a plan that's better than shooting these poor innocent animals. So um, that's, um, you know, it was, uh, geese are very loyal and they mate for life and are productive, protective of their partners <coughs> and offspring. Um, they mate for you know life, and if it, there's a sick or injured geese, they'll uh, refuse to leave their side. So you know this all shows us that um, they are, uh, they suffer and they feel pain, and we just believe that this was not done properly. Yeah, did you want to say something? Ma'am, before you go, I yeah. want to just verify one thing. Yeah. You are Maria Lagana. Correct. You sent me an email on July 18, 2019. Yes. You stated in this letter, and has not anything really to do with geese, but it has to do with me and your comment that you made, which is out in public. Yes. We had inquired about the act and found that like all our most recent incidents of drownings, offenses, beavers, in our lake, permission was given by a Mr. Tony Hay. He does not investigate the situation and will just okay killing in any way or shape, which is both a waste of money and extremely inhumane action. And he makes decisions without any thoughts to the consequences to bother the animals and people in our neighborhood. Did you, say, you said that to me, did you not? I probably did, yes. And, and where did you get that information? Well, because we approached you once before because uh, beaver traps were set out and beavers were uh, drowned. And I tried to talk to you in a manner so that you would explain to me why it happened. And you well, we said- we didn't do it, ma'am. I couldn't explain it to you. The excuse town me? Did, the town did not do that. The beaver traps were not done by the town? No, ma'am, there was not. The drowned no... traps were not set by you? They were not. Oh. Well, I have no idea. Then we we found missed. about it after the fact. We got, we got misinformation and I apologize for that, but okay. we were told, um, and I called you and actually you, you said to me. After the fact. I found out me? after it was out in public. That's when I was made aware of it. I never did the okay. okay. I just want that clear in public. Okay, fair Thank enough. You. Okay. Well, uh, okay. At, at the time you told me that you gave, you said they approached me, I gave them the money to do it and it was the best way to drown the beavers. Oh, no way. You didn't say that to me? Not even I'm close. sorry, I didn't record I it I can't then. wait for the next one. Okay, <laughs> come on. Next. All right. <laughs> I love this. Do you want to say something else? Do you want to say something? Okay, so. <clears throat> Go ahead. Samantha Woodgate, 175 Shore Drive. So I am the lucky person to have the front row view of the shooting of the geese. So I could see the gunpowder coming out of the guns and I could smell the gunpowder in the air. I saw these people, some poor geese floundering around. I yelled at the guys, can you please put them out of their misery? Just geese floundering around in the water, just letting them die. Um, 
I feel it's unsafe, as I said in my letter. It is just a wide open space, and I get it because I spoke with Officer Tompkins, who says it's within regulation, but it feels unsafe to have, I don't know how many guns, there was what, nine guys there? So I'm pretty sure all of them had guns. It feels unsafe, and I have no idea who these people are. I know one of the shooters, so they're just people who live on the lake or live in the neighborhood, so they're licensed to have a gun, but how do I know what they're doing? I have no idea. I say to myself, if something goes wrong, there is nothing to stop the gunfire from flying. And I explained that to Officer Tompkins, and he had explained to me, yes, it's all in, in that right, but it's scary. Nobody tells you it's gonna happen. You're sitting on your couch, and you hear guns going off. It sounded like literally in my backyard. My poor dog is shaking in my basement from fear. My neighbor is coming to my house to find out why there's guns going off. It is scary, and then I get to go down and be in the front row and watch innocent geese being shot. It's heartbreaking. I would like for you guys to take it somewhere else. And I don't, we can agree to disagree, Mr. Hayes. Hey, the, 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 if I could just finish my thought, I'd appreciate it. Right, we built a, well, not we. New York State built a filtration system, a very expensive filtration system right down the street from me to handle the runoff that was polluting our lake. So we're talking about, what, 15 geese on Lake Tanetta. I don't know about these other places. I'm not familiar with that. I can't imagine these geese are flying because their babies are not flying. So they're not pooping on a baseball field. So I can't speak for that. I'm just speaking for where I live. That filtration system is for all the fertilizer and the poop that's leaking out of septic systems, oil that's coming off of cars. That's why New York State built it. It wasn't because of a handful of geese. So I would argue with you that for the lake, those handful of geese are not polluting it. It's us. It's all the people who live on the lake who put fertilizer down and pesticides down. I know there's a lot of old septics around our lake. They leak. We had to have ours replaced, and it was leaking probably for a long time before then. There's lots of other people in the same boat. So I don't, I don't agree with what you're all of your, your mindset. I can't see how 15 geese would do that. But I just think that if guns are being shot as neighbors, we should know about it. And when you don't inform us, it feels, it seems like things are being done under the board so there's no flack, no feedback. There's, there's nothing to push back in what's going to happen. And then I'm sitting in my house listening to gunfire where you were hearing on the news about people being shot, and that's scary. And so as a resident, I mean, we spoke, and you said you would give me 24 hours notice for the next time they shoot. I mean, I would like to know more than that. It's my neighbor. You guys are my neighbors. And so is the Lake Tanetta Beach Association. They are my neighbors. So you guys made the decision, two neighbors made the decision of what they wanted to do on a lake. That involves a lot of other people. I, I don't know, I don't call that community. <clears throat> so um, I would love to have information about the Lake Tanetta Advisory Committee. Because I, I mentioned in my letter, I was trying to find information about them. Um, and I could not find anything about how to get on the board, how to get information about them. Are they involved in these decisions? There's nothing up to date on the website. So if I could have some laid out information on that, I'd appreciate it. Okay, John Lord here is the representative to the Tenega Association. Uh, he'll get your name and phone number okay. uh, and provide you. You can just come up quick before you go, okay. get the information. He will contact you. Yeah, we had a we had a meeting last year 
uh, an information meeting, I think in the late spring, uh, was noticed on the website. And um, most of the people that attended were the board members and a few people from, uh, I think, Coolidge um, Road section. And I think the concern at that point was uh, the seaweed in the lake and trying to make it, um, the people in the Coolidge area were, wanted to, to make it a beach again so that so they were exchanging ideas with people on the Tanetta Lake uh, Advisory Board. And we also had uh, Don Cuomo <coughs> who does consulting work for the Tanetta Lake um, Advisory Board and he talked about uh, the blue-green algae um, issues and what uh, latest science was on how to take care of it. And um, so it was, it was a good meeting, uh, but uh, we haven't met since then. And uh, after tonight, I'd, I'd probably want to call another meeting and invite anybody that wants to come. So. Well, and for all of us out in the audience, we can sign up on the website for alerts, which I did, Mr. Hayes. You had recommended that. So I had signed up for alerts, so. Great. Um, and I would love to participate. I feel like this incident really has taught me a lesson that I want to participate and be a part of something that means a lot to me. And I agree with you, Mr. Hay. Lake Tanetta is like a little jewel to me. And I see the changes going on. I just don't see it related to geese. I see the lily pads and the reeds and things like that. So I would love to be a participant and understand better what's going on. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, good evening. My name's Carl Levich, uh, 33 Astor Place. I'm a 50 year resident. I grew up on uh, Tanetta Lake. I'm actually the uh, treasurer of the uh, Tanetta Lake Heights Community Association. Um, we've had a serious problem forever keeping a beach opened with the geese. Um, I, can, I can't even tell you how many times we've refunded money to, uh, to people because they said we didn't keep the beach clean because of the, beast, uh, the, uh, the geese feces. But be that as may, um, there's a lot of misinformation going around. There was a letter to the editor by a resident that was probably got the information from uh, Miss Woodgate who just spoke now. Um, there was no joking going on when the uh, culling of the geese happened. There was not nine people, there was four people, three boats. Um, I can tell you that for a fact because I was there, okay? I was there when the cops were called and I was there who spoke to Deputy Neuner. Okay, so this is- Okay, no, no back, no back. There was not nine people, there was four. Okay, okay. there might have been nine people Carl, at our Carl, beach, please. but there was four, the board, okay? Please, so, if you don't think that we have a problem with geese in this beach or in this lake, then you guys really, you don't know what you're talking about. Because 20 years ago, we didn't have a geese problem. We have a geese problem now because we have people feeding the geese on a daily basis, where I have taken pictures and 15 years ago brought it to the town board and showed the people feeding geese. DEC highly recommends not feeding geese. People are saying, can we rehome them? DEC does not recommend, or nor do they give you a permit to rehome geese. Neither does the federal government. Um, and I can tell you since we, since the geese were called, we haven't had a big of a problem. We were getting two to three five gallon buckets a day or every other day of feces picking up and our members were not happy with it. So this is one of the reasons why it's done. It wasn't done inhumanely. They weren't suffering. Um, you know, everybody can say what you want and then you put something on the internet and it blows up and that's what's happening right now. I can tell you for a fact. So people really should get the facts straight. Get involved with Tanetta Lake Advisory Committee if you want to make Tanetta bit, uh, better. I mean, we have to. I mean, as John Lord said, Don Cuomo, who, who is a consultant for us, <clears throat> they, you know, the biggest thing right now, or, or the most effective thing, is a $100,000 contraption that's going to put chromium, polycarbon, some kind of chemical, in, which is not a chemical, but as far as I'm concerned, is a chemical in the lake to control the weeds. I mean, people that want to swim in the lake, and you have a beach, you need to take the weeds out yourself like we've done for over 50 years. That's why our beach is pretty clean. 
The only thing that's not clean about it is the geese that come on our beach. Every morning when we open at five or six, the damage is already done. So there's no sense in hiring a geese watch or anybody to come and do that. So that's why I just wanted to make sure that, you know, that the information is correct and it's not being decimated, uh, disseminated and, and, you know, people are going off on tangents because I feel that's what's happening. I'm for addling the eggs. We actually tried to addle the eggs um, <clears throat> probably about eight years ago and it was, it wasn't successful because we couldn't find the nests. It's not always that easy to find a nest. And then you have to bring then pieces of plywood and everything with you because they will fend their uh, nests to no end, the geese. So that's, you know, something if, you know, the town wants to go with addling the eggs, absolutely, I would be 100% on it again. But I can assure you we have tried it in the past as an advisory committee and was unsuccessful. That is one of the things that will be happening next year. We're taking precautions now, which was in the plan before this even happened, to do addling the, We have to do everything humanly possible. And some people think inhumanly possible, but anything to do to make this better and addling the eggs will be on the map for next year. And I'll and be 100% behind. we just reached out to you to help with that. Absolutely. We have a way to find them as we didn't have in the past. Yes, absolutely. And we would, ma'am. We heard what you said. We wrote it down. We will look into it. You know, and then as far as the 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 um, the, the the drowning of the beaver, and I don't know who was responsible for that, but what was brought to my attention is one of the people that went out in the lake, um, especially down by the Cedar Swamp, which is a, a protective preserve, and it's the biggest filtration center in our lake. They. Beavers were taking down trees left and right. I even uh, gave uh, Patty Borman some pictures of the um, beavers taking down trees on the uh, town property. So that's probably why they were dealt with at that time. They were killing trees left and right. They were, and especially the uh, white cedar, which they're not easy to come back. And it's it's a total filtration uh, point for us on the north uh, the north end of the beach. So we don't want to lose that. So that might have been um, the beavers are still there. Their hut is still there. But I tell you, I don't know if I, I haven't seen them the way we saw them at that time when it, when, uh, when it was happening. And that was probably about five or six years ago, I think. Or maybe it was, maybe uh, four or five years ago. But that's why I think the beavers were dealt with. Um, again, they were destroying trees. They were destroying the white cedar swamp. Again, I had nothing to do with it or knew about it until after the fact. But the bottom line is the <clears throat> DEC controls. Anything that goes on with beavers and geese, we have to deal with the DEC and they authorize us and tell the town or whoever they told in this case to deal with the beavers the way they did. Whether it was legal or not, I don't know, because I was not involved. Exactly. Yeah. And just, just one last point that I want to make as far as, you know, people saying the town gave the okay to do this. If you are a farmer or a manager of a beach or drinking water supply, between April 1st and August 31st, you do not need a federal permit, but need written authorization from the local DEC wildlife office. So anybody can get this. It doesn't have to be the town. Yes. This, this uh, depredation permit. And it has been successful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Carl? Carl ha, have you been doing this for a number of years? The uh, this is probably, we didn't do it last year, but I would say for the four years before that, every year we have done it, yes. And what, did, what did you do? Around the same time of the year? Yes, oh. it's, it's, it's right before, it's right before, we do it right before our beach opens up. Okay. What do they do? Uh, shoot, the, shoot the deer. Okay. Shoot the geese right there. Thanks. Hey, you know, my name is Bill McGregor. I live at 56 Bloomer Road. I'm up in Brewster Heights. I'm also uh, vice president of the Tenato Lake Association. I control it. I'm the one that's out there controlling it. And it's to the date that I pick, and the people that I pick, and there was five of us people out, out there this year, because that's the way it's done the safest. I control the weather, I can pick it according to the weather, the time of date, and the people that are out there that I trust behind my back with a shotgun. Otherwise, you're not out there. And then it's taken out, and I personally take them down, and I've been doing it for years to the Wolf Preserve down in South Salem. And they're more than happy to have a diversion to the diet for the wolves. They've been doing not, nothing but thankful for it. And uh, that's all I got to say. I keep it safe. That's my main concern. Quick Thank and you. safe. Thank you. Sorry, can you say what was your name again? Bill 
Good evening, everybody. I'm Bill Ratajak, 80, 85 Shore Drive. Um, I am the chairman of the board for Lake Tanette Heights Community Association. And um, that's a great picture. I have to tell you, I'm personally involved with cleaning up T Beach, as it's known for the last 50 years that I've lived in Brewster. Um, it's not a pretty sight. So I, I've heard about the geese. I've heard about a lot of different things. Um, quite frankly, I'm a little upset about certain neighbors that are extremely derogatory. We undertook this process because nothing else was happening. And uh, it was done very solidly. I think Bill kind of hit on it a little earlier. Um, these are not just going out, cowboys shooting people and doing whatever. We were very solid. There was four to five of us out on a, on a kayak. We called the geese. The carcasses were brought to help other animals. They served uh, a food purpose for the uh, uh, Wolf Conservatory down in South Salem. There was non-toxic shells used uh, in, in a very professional way. I, I've heard comments about hiring professionals. I think as a volunteer, we're helping the town and keeping the taxes down. But uh, I'd like to go back to that. Uh, I personally help clear the beach every day. I put a lot of volunteer hours in to, to help our members out. We're running 70 to 80 family members across from the town beach. And um, it's a daunting task. Um, I've heard from three quarters to a pound of feces every day per animal on our beach. And quite frankly, um, if it can't push the shelf, I would prefer that our children do not get sick from playing in the same sand that that happens. And I've seen larger than that every day. And I encourage everybody that's against this to come and join our association and come help me clean every day and deal with this. And we will probably have a different perspective than what you think that uh, we're, we're, we're not helping the beach out. So this is only what we see on the sand. Um, it's changing the water quality every day. That's why there's discussions about adding chemicals to the water, which I'm not too for, I would say. Uh, I think it's a problem. But um, and the last thing I want to bring up is we can all disagree. There's somebody that has spoken tonight was uh, extremely derogatory and changing what was said and what was done during this process and um, being extremely dirty and vulgar in my opinion and I don't think that needs to happen. If this person would like to sit down with me and discuss this in a professional manner, I would clearly welcome that instead of yelling and cursing and calling the police and, um, and, and creating a bigger problem on social media. You have to be part of the solution instead of being a keyboard gangster, in my opinion. Um, I, I think it would help more for neighbors to get involved with each other. That's why we have a community association. That's why we're supposed to talk to each other, not walk by our driveway and look forward instead of saying hello. That's where it really starts. That's where we can truly change what's happening. We don't have to agree, but we need to be civil about it. And we need to be human about it and talk about these things. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Ann Finuzzi. Um I was not a witness to what happened that night but I have been a witness to a long history of man's battle with nature. And I remember as a child, which was many, many years ago, the same uh, arguments and the same problems were attached to our good friend, our family companion, the dog. And yet, well-intentioned people came together 
and found humane ways by which issues between animals and humans could be resolved. Not totally, because each side had to compromise, had to be, what shall I say, tolerant. Certainly, for years and years and years, we tolerated, and even to this present day, tolerate some of the things that are attached to our companions, our beloved companions, the dog. And so, little by little, though, we've become, what shall I say, more knowledgeable, more um, knowing. As a matter of fact, the Wall Street Journal had an entire issue on our companions, the dog. But what does it feel like to be a dog? Well, what does it feel like to be a geese, or a goose, or any, or any animal? What needs to be done, in my humble opinion, is that the child become involved and engaged. There are dissuasion methods, humane dissuasion methods, just like there were methods to, for our companion, the dog. Nowadays, there isn't practically one shelter that is a kill shelter. And yet, years ago, all shelters killed dogs within 24 to 48 hours. People walked on the street and there was dog poop all over the place. And there were arguments between neighbors. This is, to me, very reminiscent of what is going on with the geese. There were um, accusations that the dogs uh, bred disease, which all feces do, and even us, and cats, and so forth. We do not go to the extreme, for example, that South Korea does, where they have dog meat markets. We don't want to do, we don't want to do that, and there shouldn't be any market for geese. As I said, there are dissuasion methods. I'm not going to go into it tonight. I suggest strongly strongly that if there is an association of the Lake Tanata Association, that residents who are around the lake be notified of the surroundings and also perhaps form a subcommittee to examine dispersion methods. And, and to tilt to, and because, and because they have been successful, there have been successful ways on golf courses, on other lakes, and so forth, without exorbitant costs or more uh, hostility between neighbors. So I make, I make that suggestion. And I also make the suggestion that if there are individuals who are obtaining uh, permits from the DEC, which is very easy to do, and I know that for a fact. Very easy to obtain permits from the DEC. They're only too happy to give permits out for hunting, <coughs> for killing. They're, they get money for that. They get money. And as a matter of fact, um, not here, but in Lake Maripak, they were going to pay $10,000 $10,000 to eradicate um, the gas population, which comes every single year. Every single year. Now, why, why are the geese coming every single year? 
because that's their home. That's their habitat. And so we need, we need to, certainly we can, we can deal and cope with their habitat. So I ask you again to, to have input from residents, to look at other methods, other methods to dissuade, to dissuade and to reduce geese. And yes, there might be issues, but there are, there are always issues with human and animal interactions. So I hope, Mr. Long, that you will uh, consider what I'm, what I'm saying and consider it very carefully. And thank you very much for making, for helping me speak. And um, I, I, I didn't, I didn't think uh, I would be, I would be here on on such an issue, not in my town. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Hi, my name is Kathy Chidina. I am part of the Recreation Department, um, and I am one of the people that pick up that goose poop every day. Um, my concern when doing this is the safety of our kids. We have a swimming program. We had 160 kids this year. I pick up what you saw was just yesterday, and actually that was a mild day. Um, I can standardly pick up grocery store bags, two of them in any given day. And for me to have children running around on the beach and in the grass and having them fall down and, and have that on their hands and then they wipe it off and they just keep, they just keep going. You know, not necessarily taking the time to wash their hands um, properly. It, it's a concern for me. I, I want our kids to be safe. I want them to have an enjoyable time at the lake. I want parents to feel good when their kids are there to know that they can just let them run around. I, I have been there picking up the goose poop and people actually point it out to me. They're like, oh, there's some over there. Oh, there's some over there. Just because they know it's there and they know it's, it's, it's not a sanitary situation. And I, I think that what we're trying to do is trying to minimize it as much as possible. So, yep, we, we, they, they were, they were uh, I'll call it euthanized this year. Um, you know, I mean, it, it, it is that way. I mean, when, when the deer population starts to explode, you know, you're given the permission to cure more, kill more deer. It, it's just, it's a, it's a cycle, it's a, it's a circle of life. And it, you, when you have mice in your house, do you kill them or do you let them, do you, do you, you, do you get, catch them humanely and let them out the door? I mean, they're, they're, it's, it's a problem, and, and at, at this point, the geese have become like mice in our house, and it, they, they are here, and we're trying to do our best. We had so many complaints about the, the goose poop that it, 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 it's, it's overwhelming, and, and you need to understand that we're trying to do the best that we can for this community. So if you would have, you know, any suggestions you have, you want to come down and help pick up poop with me, hey, I'm more than happy to have you come down. I would love the extra help. So come on down. It's a lot of fun. You know, you, you got to scrape it all. It's, it's just a lot. It's, it's not a pleasant thing. So anybody who wants to volunteer and come with me, let me know. Um, you know, call recreation. I'll be more than happy to have you come down. So, but I just want you to know that, you know, I, I think what we're doing is, is one of the best methods. It does help. You know, there are a lot more geese on that lake than what actually were euthanized, so thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other speakers? Okay, everyone had an opportunity to speak. Any more comment from the town board? Um, I have a few things. Um, I think this, it was very helpful to hear both sides, so I'd like to thank, it does take courage to speak at a town board meeting, no matter what side you're on, so I'm very grateful for that. Um, I wanted to build on uh, what Ann Finese said in, in that I think what, what happened with dog manners, so to speak, has really changed greatly because of peer pressure. Um, people, when I was growing up, no one picked up after their dogs, there were no electric fences, dogs ran everywhere. 
They pooped wherever they wanted. That's just the way it was with local peer pressure of people saying, you've got to pick up after your dog. You've got to keep your dog on your property. Things changed. And I think neighbors working with neighbors make things change. Um, and I think there's a real, I think that there's a great probability of being able to work together, especially if John can put together a meeting. Um, because I know I was around for the egg addling. I did not participate in that, but I know it was very unsuccessful, unfortunately. And I think it's a great way to deal with this situation. So volunteers for that next spring would be extremely helpful. I think when everyone does their, their part, um, you're much more apt to come to some compromise because you can see the other side and how difficult it is for them, whether they want to save the geese or they're tired of picking up goose poop. Um, I, I now have grandchildren and they go to a lake uh, up in Massachusetts which doesn't have geese, so I'm going to look into that and see what exactly they do up there. So I think there really could be, um, I think everyone's been very civil and I think that's a really good start that everybody has made. And if you can all work together, um, sign up for the alerts like Samantha did, I think um, that will help you greatly to, uh, to, to really make this work. Because the lake, like the infiltration that Samantha spoke about, that doesn't, you know, we want to get this lake clean, and that includes goose poop. That is problematic. Um, so the, the, the more we can work together and eradicate the problem, the cleaner the lake is going to be for everyone who enjoys it. So I appreciate everyone speaking. Thank you. Yes, thank you for coming on that part. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I forgot something. Mm. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, you don't need to state your name. We know who you are. <laughs> because sunglasses don't work either. <laughs> You'll see me again. Um, may I make uh, one suggestion, and I, I just want to uh, uh, piggyback on what uh, Lynn said, is that uh, if you're planning a meeting, um, <clears throat> Mr. Lord, that you do so um, during this time. Before, before the geese come back to the lake. Because I think one of the things that uh, was very helpful in terms of the uh, doggies and the putty cats and whatever else, uh, uh, you know, uh, of, our, uh, of our furry and non-furry neighbors and wing neighbors is that we got to know their routines and their habits. One of the gentlemen said, about addling and oiling, and it was difficult to find nests and everything of that kind. And I think that 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 needs that needs some study, and uh, uh, residents getting together with with knowledgeable people, knowledgeable people, because in another lake um, community we had to get knowledgeable people, and that's and and and, and the problem. Of uh, the problem, the issue, um, gradually, gradually became manageable, and I think that that's what what everyone is looking for. So thank you very much, Lynn. Okay, thank, thank you. you. We're going to close this portion, move on. What, what I'm going to suggest now is between John, I'm going to ask you to conduct the meeting here at Town Hall sometime before Thanksgiving. Sure. For uh, a plan that we the, implement. And Good. by springtime, have the plan in place. Everyone's going to know what we're going to end up doing. No one's going to agree exactly what's going to end up happening. Um, we'll ha ask you to sign up for it. If you send an email that you want to be involve yourself, give us your email address. And again, John doesn't know it because I'm just telling him now. We'll listen. We'll do the best we possibly can. And we're never going to agree exactly 100%. We have every intent. This town board's always try to work with the residents. I think the internet is one of the worst things I've seen ever going on half the time. And I don't participate in it, but I hear a lot about what goes on in it. And I just wish people would just be more cognizant of what they say and know the facts before they say it. So, at any rate, October, November, John, I'm going to ask John to have a meeting here at the town hall. We'll post it, ask some of the, all actually, that are here this evening, they would like to participate, come up with a plan. I'm going to look into hiring someone to do it. I think we have now a professional. And again, anyone can do this. They can go and get a permit and get it done and see if we can get some semblance of an uh, outline of how we're going to move forward for next year and look to do that.
Now I'm going to ask for a one minute recess. So most of you don't probably don't want to stay for the rest of our meeting because we have a lot more fun than just this. You're welcome to stay. So I'm going to ask for a one minute recess. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you all for coming. I make a motion to go back into the meeting. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Second item on the work session this evening is the water and sewer district policy. Um, this has taken an awful lot of time and work. I bet you we spent, well, I don't spend every minute of the day. Lori Bell was a big help with this. Um, my secretary, the accounting office, LeVon Bedrosian's office. We finally have now in front of you a plan that's six pages long. Um, we've had water and sewer districts that we kind of inherited over time from developers that walk away from them when they're not profitable. Um, you have, okay, so the water districts, we have Birch Hill, Blackberry, Brewster Heights, Hillcrest, Fox Hill, Mountain Brook, Peaceable Hill, Spring House Estate, Star Ridge, <coughs> and sewer district, we have Blackberry, Brewster Heights, and Peach Lake. Uh, what happened was um, when Peach, Peaceable Hill went online last year, and we were going through the records, we found some discrepancies. We found properties that weren't listed, that were in the district. And I said, geez, if we have this kind of a problem here on Peaceable Hill, what do we have in the other districts? So we basically undertook the entire town's water and sewer districts. And a culmination of that is what you see in front of you this evening. Um, so the bottom line, what we found going through it, we found parcels that were in the district that <clears throat> belong. Parcels are in the district that should have been paying that weren't paying. We found parcels that weren't, that should have been in the district and weren't in the district. It was nuts. So the bottom line is, we've got it all corrected except one property. Lori, I gotta check with you because we don't know if they have a well or not. But as much as we got done, there wasn't a big difference in the pricing. But we do have now a plan because when we went back, now all these came in in different years. They go back, some of them, 30 and 40 years. We could not find the records. So this will now be the official record. Anyone that has a water or sewer district will adhere to this policy. The major things we're gonna have going forward, so you know, all take place pretty much on page two. Rates for properties with wells who are in the district. Um, there'll be a minimum. Now, right now in Peaceville, there are two properties that are in the district that are not paying. Now, I know they're not gonna be happy when they're told that one, they're in the district, they should have been paying all along, they were not. And the minimum charge for any district will be $20 to participate. They have a well, but the way the law reads, they're in the district and should contribute accordingly. And Tony, that's per quarter? Per quarter, okay, yes, thank you. that's the minimum. And of course, you see here that if someone comes down after, the, there, was, there was no rhyme or reason. Now, there's a, there's a, here's the new rule book. If someone comes in, this applies to every district in town, regardless. I think the smallest district we have is 24 homes, and we have as many as well over, I think, almost 400 in San Bruce Heights. So um, there's a flat rate if there's multiple units within. Um, before, it was kind of helter-skelter how they were paying. In other words, if one, in Peaceful Hill, there's a four-family home. So the home itself is the unit, and the other three feed off of that same meter, so to speak. So for each additional property, there'd be $50. So the rate now is like 395. They would now pay another $150. And early on, they were paying 395 four times, which wasn't fair. And uh, vacant units or vacant properties, um, some were being charged, some weren't, but we have identified that, like I just read on page two, under vacant units, we've identified that. And there's one other change that's gonna come with this as well. Um, if the owners of the property do not contribute to the capital for the past five years, there will be a fee of five, capital cost for five years. They pay for the previous five years. This way here, they get caught up. Even though they're not, nothing is on the property. We have a fairly large parcel on Peaceable Hill, which could probably, they could build maybe two or three homes. Um, they actually weren't paying anything before. But if someone comes in, what is it? We've had a person just recently come into the sewer district in uh, Blackberry Hill. Mm -hmm. We just kind of, I won't say we picked it out of this air, but we, we came up with a number based on previous. But this here is written. So when someone comes into the district, we can say, here's what you pay. This is what everyone is now bound by. 
And when we draw up the resolution, I'm going to work with Will with them, that when this policy goes into effect, the building department, special district department, the assessor, and the accounting department will all have to be notified of the change. In other words, the succession, one, each one has to be notified because they all are affected by any change that's made. So with that, uh, I'm going to, if there's any questions or comments, I'll take them now. And if not, we'll put it on the next agenda to the past. And I have to say, this is a long time in coming, and we really didn't know what was hidden in the dust. Okay. Any comment? Uh, thanks for the work. Yeah, oh. thanks for putting this together. That's all we do. <laughs> we love work. <laughs> okay. I'll make a motion now to go into the regular portion of the meeting. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I waive the reading of the correspondence. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approval of the voucher list, uh, $743,580.99. So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Setting of meeting dates and public hearings. All meetings be held at 1360 Route 22, Bruce, New York at 7 p.m. unless otherwise noted. Thursday, September 12th, 2019. And Thursday, September 26th, which is my birthday, so I'll be here. 2019. All in favor? Bring your party Aye. hats. Aye. Yeah, yeah. No party hats. Aye. Strictly Eight. business. Oh. Is there, who is the second person? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I guess it was something about my birthday. I won't even tell you how old I am. <laughs> oh, we can find out. Was that party hats? That party hats. No party hats. No, no, no. Yeah. You bring them, you guys wear them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> budget transfers, weigh the reading of the budget transfers. Is second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Number five, resolution, Ruffian LLC released a performance bond, establishment of a maintenance bond. Now therefore be resolved that the town clerk is hereby directed to cancel and return the original performance bond for Ruffian LLC commercial site development located at 3834 Danbury Road and to return any and all bonds, original bonds, deposits, letters of credit, or other indicia, a security posted in connection with this project on the condition the applicant slash owner A files a post-construction performance guarantee in the amount not less than $2,850 for a period for four years. B, files a landscape maintenance bond in the amount not less than $5,000 for a period of two years and a deposit of sum of $750 in escrow with a town clerk, such sum to be used to fund annual stormwater system inspections and reports in the event the property owner fails to provide the same. So move for discussion. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number six is a resolution acceptance and offer a dedication Stone Hollow Drive to and including Knoll Ridge Court. And for those of you in the audience to know, that's what they call Fortune Ridge Estates down to Route 124 in the town of Southeast. Okay, wow. I'm gonna be busy on this one. Okay, if I get tired, I'll ask for help, okay? Mm -hmm. Now therefore be resolved that the supervisor of the town of Southeast is hereby authorized to accept the deed or deeds dedicating and releasing the necessary lands for the road known as Stone Hollow Road, oops, sorry, Stone Hollow Drive, up to and including no Ridge Court, and cause same to be recorded in the Putnam County Clerk's Office in connection with the residential development known as Fortune Ridge Estates upon the developer having fulfilled the following terms and conditions. One. The road shall be completed in accordance with all other town highway road construction specific specifications and in a manner satisfactory to the town's consultant engineers and the town highway superintendent, including, but not limited to, erecting a sign on Stone Hollow Road at the des designated dedication terminus, therefore which reads, in quotes, the town maintain of road ends, end of quote, together with the construction of a barrier or similar movable obstruction and the point to inhibit passage of traffic beyond the point where dedication ends. Two, the developer shall provide a deed or deeds of dedication for all portions of such road being de dedicated to the town necessary to convey fee simple title to the lands underneath the road to the town of Southeast, free and clear of all liens or encumbrances except for utility easements. Three, the developer shall provide the town with all necessary and proper easements if any, across adjoining lands for the purpose of drainage or discharge of storm water from the dedicated portion of the road over such adjoining lands. Four, the developer shall provide a title insurance policy issued by a company which is a member of the New York State Board of Title Underwriters in good standing ensuring the town's fee simple title in and to such road as described in the deed dedication in the amount of $10,000. And five, 
The developer and the town shall execute an agreement in form and substance satisfactory to the town attorney, wherein a portion of the developer's security deposit slash performance security in the amount of $286,621.25 shall be held until the issuance of the last certificate of occupancy on the northerly portion of the subdivision and earmark for use in repaving or reconstruction of the road caused in whole or in part by the movement of heavy equipment over so much of the road being dedicated and be further resolved that upon compliance with the foregoing condition, sorry, and in accordance with the provisions of section 171 highway law of the state of New York, consent is hereby given that the highway superintendent of the town of Southeast make an order laying out the aforesaid town highway. The town highway consists of the lands described in deed dedication and further resolved that upon compliance with the aforesaid conditions and upon posting the appropriate maintenance bond, the town clerk is authorized to record the deed our deeds of dedication in the Putnam County Clerk's Office. So move for discussion. Second. Discussion. Roll call vote. Councilman Alvarez. Yes. Councilwoman Eckhart. Yes. Councilman Larka. Yes. Councilman Lord. Yes. Supervisor Head. Yes. Pass unanimously. Thank you. Good luck with your project. Thank you. Thank you. Number seven, resolution, settlement of certiorari proceedings, Euro offense tax map 57.1-9, sorry. Six? Well, six days just back up. Okay. We don't, it's just part of the sorry. package. Rick, that'll be, Rick, that'll be ready tomorrow, by the way. Right? Okay. Rick, Rick or Rourke, it'll be ready for you tomorrow. I'm sorry? It'll be ready for you tomorrow. Thank you very much. You can thank Michelle for that. <laughs> She doesn't know, but she's coming early tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Resolution 7, certiorari or your offense. Okay. Um, <coughs> now, therefore, be resolved that the town board of the town of Southeast does hereby accept the recommendations of, of its professional advisors and authorizes the town attorney to execute a stipulation of settlement, consent judgment, and our order on consent in accordance with said recommendation for the following. Petitioner, your offense, Inc., Tax ID 57.1-9, year 2019, assessment 969-400, settled assessment 850,000. And be further resolved that the town attorney is hereby authorized and directed to execute any and all stipulations, consent orders, or other documents necessary to reflect the foregoing settlement. So move for discussion. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number eight. Resolution, Municipal Corporation Resolution, Brewster Central School District Tax Collection Services. Now therefore be resolved that the town supervisor be and is hereby authorized to execute and deliver an intermunicipal agreement, IMA, to the Brewster Central School District in the name of and on behalf of the town of Southeast, wherein and whereby the Brewster Central School District will reimburse the town of Southeast for its pro rata share of all expenses actually incurred by town in connection with the annual software support and maintenance of the tax collection system provided by Business Automation Services, Inc. So move for discussion. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number nine, same resolution for North Salem School District. Now, therefore, be resolved that the town supervisor be and is hereby authorized to execute and deliver an IMA to the North Salem School District in the name and, and on behalf of the town of Southeast, wherein and whereby the North Salem School District will reimburse the town of Southeast for its pro rata share of all expenses actually incurred by the town in connection with the annual software support and maintenance of the tax collection system provided by Business Automation Services, Inc. So move for discussion. Second. Uh, just quick discussion. Each year, the town of Southeast provides tax services to them with our program, and we're being reimbursed in, for 2018, 2019, and in the future. It's an IMA we've had for numerous years, and now it's in print. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number 10, Resolution Reappointment Board Assessment Review, Wendy Lewis, 9319 to 093024. So move for discussion. Second. I'd like to thank, okay, discussion. I'd like to thank Wendy, Lori, got a great team there and keep up the good work. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number 11 is supervisor's financial report. Uh, I'm currently working on the budget. I've met with 
probably uh, all but two departments, and uh, your budget will be ready for you. It will be presented on September 26th, my birthday present to you guys, believe it or not. Um, the budget that, you have, that you're looking at in front of you now, the up-to-date one, again, we still have the problem with the revenues from the courts, which I have to readdress this year in the budget. I think I've lowered it by about 150000 which is a substantial hit. If it comes back to life next year, then we'll be, you know, better for it. But I didn't know what last year was going to happen this year, so we have to ride with the wave. And other than that, everything is pretty good. We put together a good budget. It's, uh, you know, when you have a good budget, it seems to work. But once in a while, something goes astray. Tony, what percentage can it go up this year? Or should, what well, are we the, to? the tax cap is two percent, and there's like a little play area that they give you that I, I, I forgot the term. They use. So it's really an actual it's about two point one, two point one two five. But we stay it's it's considered right. the, within the tax cap. And I'll tell you right now, well, I'll wait until the closing to go into that one. Our school tax bill just came out. Okay. And they yes. got a huge increase yeah i'm hearing reports into my office and i said what are you calling me for i didn't do it <laughs> um yeah we could talk about that but i it, but star checks are bigger than usual but i don't know if that's, that, that I have doesn't not, help okay, I, that I don't know. but all i know is i've had reports some school tax bills have increased by well over a thousand dollars and but they came here one night you know they came here and identified that they had this additional money uh all the monies were going to be spent accordingly and it's shown in their tax bill. Okay, public comment. Uh, Lori Bell, tax, uh, assessor. You mentioned the tax bills were out, or oh, the star checks are also out, a lot I, of them. I've received a star check, and I think yeah, I also, kind of good timing, also the property tax rebate checks are also out. Separate and apart from the star credit checks. Oh, then I'm this not is sure. The last, what they got. Yeah, right. How much was your check? It was for more than usual. I think it was for five hundred and I got a nine. That's your property tax rebate it was check. A star credit. You star still credit. get your star exemption later, right. off okay. your school bill. Only new property owners right. after two thousand fifteen get a star credit check thank you right. to the politicians for changing the way that gets handled is that sarcastic for real <laughs> yeah, yeah i don't think what? anyone's no, not, really not, not I present I company you're... excluded <laughs> Lori, i got a check for 19 dollars i have no that was idea fine. i have no but idea then i got another check wait was that from new york state i got two checks this week one was the tax one which was bigger than 19 dollars and one was 19 dollars come on tell us about you know what, maybe what were they both from were they both from new york state yeah I have no idea what 19 Maybe Maybe one was. was from income tax. No, I oh. wish. Yeah, no. I, <laughs> I mean, maybe the 19 bucks. That's so like that the 500 and whatever today. is the, the New York State property tax rebate check is a percentage of your star okay. exemption. So for those of us getting the basic star exemption, it's five $500 and change. Those getting the enhanced star exemption, it was, what did my father say, 500, uh, no, 900 and something right. dollar okay. check. Those of us that have owned our houses since before 2015, we still get the exemption off our school bill. So you get a net school bill. Any new property right. owner since 2015, they get the rebate check in the mail. Same, same tax savings, so basic right. star is about $1,000. We get it off our school bill. Right. All of us have owned our houses long enough. New owners get a separate check. exemption, uh, the credit check in the mail. Okay. Is that the way they plan to do it in the future? I mean, is every yes. year is going to be that way? Yes, the state's intention is eventually everybody will sell their houses okay. and buy a new house, hopefully New York State, huh. doubtful, mm -hmm. and get a check in the mail. They want to control it. And, and if you make over 250 Okay, so it used to be if you, I didn't plan on doing a presentation, but if you make over $500,000, uh, $500, it used to be you got zip. Then, if you got made between two hundred and fifty thousand and five hundred thousand, now they've switched it. You get a check in the mail automatically. Yeah. They took the exemption away from you. You get the rebate check. I think they're going to continue. Personally, I think they're going to continue to change that, but I don't make the laws. Time to lobby our legislators. Exactly. Okay. I just put through whatever they tell me to. 
Okay. And I cashed whatever it is, sent me, and I didn't get anything yet. Oh, that check wasn't even, the perforations weren't even done, and it was like in the bank yeah. <laughs> at my house. I almost ripped mine in half opening it. So it was, and, and I have to, yeah. so uh, yeah. I have to warn people when you get that in the mail, because this happens a lot. I get people calling my office saying, I don't know, I got something in the mail. I don't know what it was or yeah. what it was for, and I'm not sure what I did with it. Right. It comes from the state, it doesn't come from us. Right. I can't help you. No, you can't tell me where my nineteen dollars came from. If you don't cash it, I can't tell you. Right. I can roughly tell you how much it was, only because I got one. But I can't help you get another one. You have right. to call. Yeah. Nobody wants to hear this, but you have to call the state. Yeah. Someone has to find out why I got a nineteen dollar check. <laughs> I'll, I'll do call, my best. Call the state. Yeah. <laughs> call, call my office. We'll give you a phone number. Call the state or go online. Right. Well, it's okay. a real challenge to open them, and so. Yes, I know. You had to do the sides first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So. so I just wanted to remind everybody that I know it, our our bills are going to be a challenge this year, but you got your New York State property tax check in the mail, and this is the last year for that. And those that are new property owners, they're getting their rebate check in the mail. So hopefully that will help. Okay. Was my original point. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Lori. Yeah. Public comment. Town board comment. Um, fa uh, fa uh, it's not Founders Day anymore. It's the Fall Festival, and that will be not this Sunday, but Sunday, September eighth. And I'm still not sure of the hours, but 12 to 5. is it twelve to five? 12 to okay, 5. it'll be twelve to five. It's really a fun day, so I would highly recommend um, if you watch this, all seventeen of you, that you uh, hey, go. You can't count. Do more people watch this? 17. Oh, I mean, yes. people watching. I thought you meant in the audience. No. We had a big crowd tonight. Jeez. I know, I know. I wish I could have announced it sooner. Anyhow, it's a very, it's a really fun day. I don't know it's your birthday next month. Either. No, but they would have been here cooking my goose, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, town board comment? <laughs> Just, I can't believe summer's over, but enjoy like, this yes. coming weekend, Labor Happy Day Labor weekend. Day. <laughs> it's the end of summer. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. We'll close tonight's meeting. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all for coming.